I would rec highly, highly recommend somebody to become a citizen just because America is a wonderful country. There's so many opportunities here. The best thing about becoming a United States citizen is that now I become an American because I live in America and I love America. Uh, there are a number of reasons why an individual uh, wants to become a U.S. citizen. I think the principal reason is that people want to participate more fully in American society. They want to be able to vote. Uh, there are certain jobs, that, uh, like firefighter or police officer, that you can't, uh, you can't get unless you're a U.S. citizen. You can't be an officer in the military. Information on starting any process with immigration for any benefit that we offer is on our website, and it's a, quite a good website. It's USCIS.gov for government. You can also download the forms right from that website. So not only do you get told how to and what forms you need, but also you can download the forms right there. We do have an information component. Um, this is the room we're in now uh, for information. We will tell you how to, but we do not do it for you. But again, that's the role that our counterparts in the legal organizations and in our community-based organizations fill. They, that's the informal role that they fill in the whole process. And, and, and they do a great job. And it really is important that people have someone outside the government to be able to look at their whole case and tell them, yes, um, you will qualify, we believe you do qualify, or you have a real problem with this issue and you need to deal with that before you go forward to naturalization. If a person were to come to see me and, and wanted to become a citizen of the United States, of course, first I would have to determine whether they meet the fundamental qualifications, which are that they've been a permanent resident for at least five years, three years if they're married to uh, and living with a U.S. citizen spouse for those three years, or they come under one of the various exceptions under the law, for instance, individuals who are, uh, in, have served in the military. Uh, then I would want to check their, uh, their record, their, if they have a criminal record. Uh, if they have a criminal record, they may be either temporarily or permanently barred for citizenship, um, or they may have a committed a crime which make them deportable, which of course certainly they would be, uh, shouldn't want to file for citizenship if they're going to end up being deported. And then I would look to see if uh, they're either exempt from the English language requirement or they speak, read, and write enough English that makes it worthwhile for them uh, to submit their application. The cost for becoming a U.S. citizen um, today is $675, which is, includes the application fee and an $80 biometric or fingerprint fee. The, if a person is indigent, um, that is that they, and they cannot afford the uh, filing fee, they can have the fee waived. In order to get the fee waived, uh, you have to prove that you cannot afford it. I think that you should gather all your documentation. I think you should um, request a Freedom of Information Act, in, which is um, a FOIA, which is basically just asking the government to give you all the um, documents that anyone, you or yourself, has ever submitted on your behalf and to consult. So it's always best if an individual wanting to become a citizen get uh, some sound legal advice before applying. In fact, some people end up, uh, uh, not only are they not eligible for citizenship, they lose their filing fee, but some people end up getting deported because uh, of something in their past which makes them not only ineligible for citizenship, but makes them uh, government have the power to remove them from the United States. Uh, certainly one place to go for free, look for free services is the CUNY Citizenship and Immigration Service Centers located throughout New York City. And uh, you can get a list of those at cuny.edu slash citizenship now. Before you are in it, you think, oh my God, it's overwhelming. I don't know where to start. I'm gonna need a lawyer. I don't understand, but when you're there, things are just, just fine. It is a daunting process, there's no question. There's a lot of information that we require. There are a lot of requirements. Uh, rightly so, it is a very precious uh, benefit that we give out. However, most people have no problem meeting them.
we are getting ready in October of 08 to um, begin to phase in a new citizenship test. The test that we currently have is very rote. It's all based on memorization of important uh, facts and data that pertain to the United States. Uh, the new test is meant to give people a real sense of what it means to be part of the American experience and to be an American citizen. Now the new exam is more about concepts than facts. So for example, instead of asking what country did we fight in the Revolutionary War, it would ask why did the colonists fight the British in the Revolutionary War. Now this type of answer requires a better understanding of the Revolutionary War. It requires more than a one-word answer and therefore it requires better verbal skills. Besides the oral questions, the applicant gets three opportunities to write one correct sentence in English, and the sentence has to be related to civics or history. Now in advance, the applicants get a list of civics vocabulary that they can use. And if you're worried about preparing yourself for the new test, which I understand will begin in October, one of the things to do is to sign up for a a class that will prepare you to take the test. City University of New York offers free ESL classes as well as free citizenship preparation classes. You can go to any one of the um, CUNY Adult Learning Center programs and sign up for one of the classes. If you need to learn to speak English, you can sign up for the ESL class. And in that class, they also cover um, American history, civics and you'll also learn a government. After uh, 13 years of being in this country, I finally um, went ahead and you know submitted my paperwork to become a citizen and uh, today here I am to be uh, sworn in. I was really impressed during the ceremony when I received my citizenship certificate. I was really impressed with the number of people that were doing the same thing at the same time. I believe there were about 400 people there. And amid this, this crowd, there were people from all over the world. What surprised me more than anything else was the day of the ceremony. You know, I just got caught up in this uh, sort of uh, this feeling of pride uh, that, uh, that was in the room. And I, I, I'll always remember how I felt. Um, the first reason I wanted to become an American citizen, citizen is so that I'll be able to vote. I'll be voting because, I'm, as I said, I'm a part of America now and I would like to choose the person I think best suited you know, to run this country. And I'll be very proud to you know, put in my vote. And I think uh, in, in engaging in that kind of civic responsibility uh, has, to, has, has in, in a sense transformed uh, how how I experience this country and I believe how this country experiences me. By being a citizen you, you, you are the constituency and you do have the right to, to express your views and, and your concerns now. In my estimation it is the best thing the American government does, the U.S. government does, is to um, naturalize new citizens, it rejuvenates the society, um, it really brings new lifeblood into our country and it really is the foundation of what we do, and it's, it's a very valued um, privilege to be an American citizen. Out of many, one means we can still live in a totally diverse um, style, but create one really strong and beautiful, rich and diverse culture. They begin the process as citizens from many different countries, and they complete the process as citizens of one country, of the United States. So you have many becoming one as part of a stronger America.